It's March 25th, 2015. I got nothing to say tonight, and this is your 40 and Slip News. You got our first story from KDVR.com, Fox 31, Denver. Uh, from Silverton, Colorado, a seven-year-old photo allegedly, why are, they always, why are they always allegedly, showing Bigfoot gallivanting through a field near Silverton, Colorado, is gaining new momentum. The photo was recently resurrected and discussed on the popular sci-fi program Paranormal Central, according to the Durango Herald. Uh, the new newspaper reports the show... Excuse me, Chris, while I take a moment. The newspaper reports the show's <laughs> host focused on one of their March episodes around the photo of the mysterious creature. Woo! The photograph was taken in 2008. It shows a hairy, tall creature running along a river in Silverton near the Durango and Silverton Narrow Gauge Railroad. Another local newspaper, the Silverton Standard and the Miner, reports... A hunt for Bigfoot event was held in the town back in 2010. Yeah. And that's the whole story. <laughs> wow. I've looked at the photo. It looks to me like a good Photoshop of Patty, the Patterson-Gimlin uh, Bigfoot, Photoshopped into a field in front of a train. Bigfoot's, not, Bigfoot's not running down a train? <clears throat> no. Although, there are reports of Bigfoot riding on trains. Um, what about Bigfoot running down trains? I want Billy the Kid Bigfoot. Now, that would be pretty cool. My physical therapist t today thought that a great movie uh, would be Alien vs. Bigfoot. No. You know, like Alien vs. Predator? No. No? You don't no. think so? No. Well, he thought so. No. And I agree with him. Yeah, you would. That, that, From goes the to, Metro. that goes to show you how limited your movie knowledge is. Predator versus Bigfoot? They both can cloak. Read the news. <clears throat> Metro.co.uk. A fearless local man blasts a UFO with a laser pointer. Uh, when three alien... Cra did, yeah, he go, okay. did, did he go... <laughs> pew, pew. <laughs> <laughs> when three alien craft entered our atmosphere in March this year... One fearless defender of Earth was ready. And I'm not, and this is this guy's real name, and I'm not making it up, but I'm going to chuckle. YouTuber Darren Crapo <laughs> raced into his backyard in North Carolina and began letting off laser blasts at the glowing orbs. Uh, he was only using a powerful laser pointer, so it's unlikely he could have seared through the hull's craft, or the hulls of the craft. <laughs> But he may have dazzled. No, the no, Steve. Pilots. If you make the pew sound, you can definitely get through the hull of the spacecraft. <laughs> of course, if they had turned out to be earthly aircraft, he could also have been looking at a jail sentence. Uh, Crapo, his real name, said, <laughs> <laughs> "I'm sorry, Chris. No, you're uh, not. No, is that? You're not fucking <laughs> sorry. That's the problem." <laughs> Now, what is that, he said? A flare going across the sky? No, there's something weird. Uh, some weird thing flying by. There it is. Here comes another one. This is not an aeroplane. And it says aeroplane. No noise, no nothing. Uh, UFO Planet, which hosts the video, helpfully points out many countries have outlawed firing lasers at aircraft. <sighs> Crapo. <Pew. laughs> the name like Crapo. Pew! No wonder the guy turned out crazy. His last name is Crabbo. Pew! Uh, OpenMinds.tv. We're, we're doing a lot of stories from Open Minds. A pretty good resource there. A Pennsylvania UFO described as Star, Tech, Star Trek shimmery. No idea. A Pennsylvania witness at Palmyra. It was, it was Star Trek shimmery. Star Trek shimmery. Uh, reported watching a large black V-shaped UFO that appeared shimmery 
in the night sky, according to testimony in case number 64079 from the Mutual UFO Network uh, Witness Reporting Database. I like how they give it a the number. Witness, that makes yeah, it more official, Steve. I have actually three MUFON reports. I don't remember the numbers, though. You only heard Probably the num- fucking UFOs, so it doesn't even count. No, I actually seen them. That is the one thing I have seen. I've heard a Thunderbird, and I've heard a possible Bigfoot, but I've never heard a UFO. You know, Chris, you don't know your UFOs well enough. You know they're silent. You can't hear a UFO. Says you. True. (laughs) The witness was that. The witness was outside walking a dog and searching the sky for satellites using a phone app when the object was first seen at the begin uh, seen beginning at 8:22 p.m. on March 18th. Uh, after finding and watching three satellites and not finding the fourth, I heard and saw one of our UH-60s flying past Hershey Park on their way back to Fort Indian Town Gap. While watching the helicopter and noticing that several other airplanes and commuter jets were in the air on such a chilly night, I detected movement out of the corner of my eye. The witness noticed the unusual object. I turned my head and there was a giant black V flying from the southwest to the northwest. Southeast to the northwest. <laughs> it was a huge flying guitar. It was a flying V. <laughs> How come, you know, rock stars don't use those big old playing the guitars anymore. <laughs> Those were the coolest things ever. I had, I had to do uh, my best to recall uh, but six red lights that I could see on the lower left wing, one under the nose, and one I could make out under the right wing in the further most aft position. Uh, the witness tried to gather as much information as possible during the short sighting. Uh, with my arm fully extended and the right hand thumb and index finger fully extended, that was the size from my nose tip to the trailing edge of a wing. It was completely silent. See? I told you, Chris, it was completely silent. Oh! You don't oh, hear UFOs, you see them. Oh. It traveled at, it traveled at, at a heading of about 320 to 330 degrees. It passed over and just behind the Black Hawk I was watching. All other air traffic was unaffected. The object had odd characteristics. Mr. Sulu, looking make a heading. <laughs> looking directly as it, at it was harder than using off-center viewing, which is best for nighttime. Looking at it directly, the red lights were very dim, and the craft was shimmery, almost like Star Trek cloaking. Make it show. With, off, with off-center viewing, you could see the red lights better and the outline of the craft. The object appeared as though it was sliding along in the sky. It wasn't like it was flying. It was just like it was sliding on a solid surface. It was so smooth, fast, and silent. Whole exposure time was about five seconds. Uh, to the average person, that might not sound like much, but to a air crew member, five seconds can be an eternity when the adrenaline and training kicks in. I tried to get a picture with my cell phone, but once you took your eyes off the craft, it was hard to reacquire the target. Uh, the, then a tree was in the way, and then I snapped a picture in the area it would have been, but it was inside the satellite app of my iPhone. Yeah. The, uh, witness it. Yeah. Always yeah. the case. See, anytime, you know, but anytime you try to get a picture of UFO, you can't. So the You're only time you Invisible and see silent, it, Steve. They're not invisible because you can see them with your naked eye. But when you get a picture like Bigfoot or any other cryptid or, you know, paranormal thing, it's got to be blurry because it's the way they are. From moviepilot.com, CNN reporters attacked and harassed by ghosts live on the air. The words, come here, were caught on tape as a ghostly voice whispers to a CNN cameraman. A history of grisly dust, ghosts, and demons. off screen by somebody else. <laughs> Probably. A routine video interview took a sinister turn for this group of CNN reporters last summer as each crew member is attacked and physically harassed by an unseen presence. Uh, the house in Pennsylvania is reported to have a whole host of ghosts and ghouls haunting it. These apparitions have apparently haunted the family for years. They have even been known to attack the family pets. 
a uh, whole ghostly host voices. of ghosts and ghouls. Yes. Mm. Uh, ghostly voices, shrieks, and screams often cut through the night's silence. The report suggests that the spirits are very antagonistic and do not respond well to any human presence uh, with, within what is probably regarded as their house. Uh, things get much darker as you delve deeper into the house. The basement of this home holds within it an even you know more insidious found, being. What's that? Ghosts and people, they, they don't live well together. No, it's like water and oil. This, this is what I found, Steve. These, these ghosts and people. They don't, there are they don't friendly coexist. Ghosts. Casper? Casper. Casper was friendly. A fucking cartoon. You're going to go with a cartoon. It's the only ghost I really know about. Yeah. I mean, really, really know about. I've had ghost experiences, and you've probably had some. You've had, you heard a ghost? No, I've seen them. Oh. I don't think they were evil. But I'm not sure that they were friendly either. I don't, I don't think people and ghosts can go coexist. I um, I don't know. I I don't think it's possible. It's uh, anyway. from what I've seen, Steve. I've seen the Amityville Horror. I've read the book. I seen it when I was like seven. I don't remember it. I've seen Poltergeist, Steve. Yeah, I seen that when I was eight. So I don't remember it. Can't coexist. The basement. Of, <laughs> they want to kill us, Steve. The they want to bring us to them. Well, poltergeists generally are bad ghosts, right? I've seen the movie, Steve. I can't remember the movie. The basement of this home holds within an, an even more in the being. Television a demon is rumored to haunt this area. Recorded in a photo in dubbed Shadow Man. This demon looks to be a whopping seven feet tall. I think it's a cloaked Bigfoot. Uh, what is apparently Are we showcased back on the them. CNN story? There's a seven foot tall demon. There's a seven foot tall demon in the basement of the Pennsylvania home that they were in. Yes. There's a lot of shit happening in New York State. Shimmery UFOs, seven foot rocks. tall demons. How do you survive? It's very hard, but I've come to uh, be able to do it. I don't Your know. life must Even be like an home. X-Files episode. It is. Even my own home has been known to be haunted. In fact, the other day, I swear, and I, I swear, I heard, no, <laughs> I saw a shadow creature or shadow man. Is that what they call him, a shadow man? Oh, yeah. But I was outside, actually, because generally these shadow people or shadow men are inside but i was outside having a cigarette you know and it was just kind of like dusk no no steve that was the grim reaper no it was a shadow man or woman <laughs> that's the case maybe but anyway With the there's a little red <laughs> i have an iphone charger in my truck in the cigarette lighter but it has a little red light on it and i leave it on all the time because it makes people think there's a security system in my truck <laughs> so they don't steal it because of the red light so anyway, I caught out of the corner of my eye a shadow going between me and the truck. And I'm like two feet from the truck. I wasn't very far. And the red light blinked out and right back on when the shadow passed it. So there was something there. Okay. An intelligent haunting is, record, is a recorded haunting in which you would see that the entity is aware of the physical world. This situation allows the entity to interact with us here in the present. It allows for physical interaction with anything from inanimate objects, doors, to even people. The difference between a human and non-human haunting is pretty much as it sounds. A human haunting seems to be the spirit or presence of an entity that was at one point human. A non-human entity is something considerably different. A non-human specter can be considered to be an angel or demon, for example. These beings have infinitely more power and influence on the physical world than any other entity. <laughs> They're writing this as if it's fact. I love it. Uh, these forms of beings have been documented in countries and continents around the world since time began. <sighs> and that, Chris... That Chris is the news. That's some, that's some amazing news, Steve. Um, almost in my shadow, man. Almost, 
No, it, it's it is all unbelievable. Especially your Shadow Man story.